never again, never, ever, ever again is how I have felt after some of the 55 people in Machu Picchu, for example, group trips that I've taken in today's podcast episode. If you're considering a group trip, some of the things that you can look for so that you can make sure you're signing up for the correct badass time that you are looking for and spoiler alert. This is also Laura and I talking about how we plan to put on really badass group trips together to come have an amazing badass trip with us. But if you're new here, yo, I'm Christine Lozada. This is another episode of Everyday Badassery. This is part of a series with Laura Erickson at Lola Whiskey, the badass group trip person that I am going to be going all around the world with. I am so excited about it, not only for my own adventures, but to adventure with you. And in today's episode, we are talking very honestly about group trips and what makes them really bad and what makes them really good. So whether you adventure with us or not, you know what to look for and have your badass adventure. I'm Laura Erickson, a travel professional, group trip leader, and content creator, and I live in Wisconsin. Badass traveler. We are going to bring you on badass adventures, but we are going to be honest whether you, you should take the group trip with us or with Laura or you go elsewhere. We want to talk very honestly about some of the really, really awful, bad group trip experiences you and I have had elsewhere in life so that if you're considering a group trip, you know what to look for. <laughs> Maybe it should be you should, and you'll know what to avoid because my 50 person group trip to Machu Picchu was one of the worst experiences of my life. Although I did respond to every single work email I had on that trip. I got my inbox to zero. It was. It's probably not a good sign. <laughs> it's not a good sign. <laughs> That's not how I wanted to spend my time in Machu Picchu. But let's actually start with kind of one of the first things um, that can be disastrous with a group trip, which is just too many people. Laura, do you have a story you can share? Because too many yeah. people can be different. Like in some situations, you do want a lot of people, yeah. but in some, you don't want that many people. You know, I I can say from like my own trips, I've never had a group bigger than 14. I have been mindful from the beginning of not wanting too many people, not only for myself logistically, because that's just a lot of people to cater to. It's a lot of personalities. It's a lot of bathroom breaks. Um, <laughs> bathroom breaks. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you about the bathroom breaks. Um, are we there yet? Um, also, like just from my experience, the, the less people, and, and there's a, there's a sweet spot, but like the less people, the more likely you are to form intimate relationships and like make friendships. I feel like when it gets big, it gets clicky. People kind mm -hmm. of go off on their own. Like, I think it's almost like you would think it'd be easier to meet people when you have a group of 50, but I actually think that if you have a group of 14, like you, you tend to spend more time together as a smaller knit group than obviously 50 people aren't going to go everywhere together. They're not going to go to dinner together. You know, you're, you're going to branch out a lot more. And so I just find that my groups are closer because they're smaller and it's almost easier to meet people in a more intimate setting than it is when there's just way too many. And it's just a logistical nightmare. Yeah. Like it's a lot of, it's from a, pla a planning perspective, like the hotels you can, the accommodations you can stay in are limited when you have that many people. Um, you might not even all be in the same place, the transportation that you take. So you might have to be on a big mm -hmm. tour bus versus like a smaller, more comfortable van. You, like I said, you can't necessarily all eat in the same place. So like, there's just, it's just harder to have a really intimate. And I like to have, you know, a culturally immersive travel experience for my, for my groups. Like I can't do that. If I'm bringing, I can't bring 40 of you to a Moroccan yeah. family's home. You can't fit. So, you know, like there's these intimate experiences that you want to have with locals that are just so much harder to do when you have lots and lots of people. That's so true. Ooh, you know what? I have a challenge for you. Cause I was like, I'm trying to think of one situation in which my group of 50 at Machu Picchu, 55 at Machu Picchu was like a positive thing. 
So I would say for the most part, it was 99% disaster. Like it was too many people and it was exactly what you talked about. We were in this beautiful, amazing foreign place and they were trying to quite literally shuttle us around on one big bus to every experience together. And so we did, we ate all of our meals together. We went to Machu Picchu together. We went on the city tour together. And like, let's just even just talk about that, a city tour. Could you imagine a single person on a microphone talking about the city? Well, you have 55, you're 55 people deep trying to listen to this. It's like, you're on your tippy toes trying to be like, I can't even hear anything unless you're standing right next to the guide. Like you can't, it's the the like the culturally i was not culturally immersed at all and so for that type of a trip it was not a good place to go to with a large group of people there was one night at mama africa and it was mama africa is this nightclub and bar that's in cusco and we took it over we took it over with 55 people and no one else was there except us and it was like a random like on a Tuesday, like Tuesday night. And that was the perfect situation to yeah. have that many people. Cause it was like an That's epic fun. night and like we created the party. But yeah. that one night of like three hours of going out was one tiny fraction amongst a six day trip. Everything else felt almost like Disneyland in mass. You know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, you're just bust around. And so if you're considering a group trip, think about what is the destination that you're going to? What kind of a situation are you on? Like that, what kind of, do you want a culturally immersive trip, for example? And is that many people going to help you with that? Because, mm -hmm. you know, unless you're at Mom Africa on the entire trip, it might be, <laughs> yeah. it might be a bit of a challenge. Um, and on that same note, so the first one is like number of people. And the second thing is around like, and this is a big one for me because my entire travel YouTube channel is I make the video I wish I got to see before I took the trip. In other words, what do I, like, what should I expect? What is it like? How can I plan ahead? Like, what do I need to know? And mm -hmm. obviously it's video. So like visually, what does it look like? And so I care so much about that on my travel channel. And when it comes to group trips, setting expectations so that people know what to expect is so important. And I have my set of horror stories, but I will let you go first. Knowing what to expect on a group trip, tell me a disastrous experience. You don't got name names. <laughs> Um, I had a really, really bad experience, um, little over a year ago on someone else's group trip. And it wasn't just me. Like I would say most people had a really bad experience, um, to the point where I've never had anybody leave my group trips early. We had like at mm. least five people change their flights and go home early. Whoa. Um, it was not good. No bueno. Um, and it was, I mean, there was a lot of factors at play. One, it was just a person that had no business running group trips. And I've, um, I have opinions about that. I think everyone thinks because they like to travel that that means that they mm -hmm. should lead groups. And to me, like that's a, it's a totally different job to me. Group trips are, it's like when you're leading a group, it's obviously ultimately like leadership and responsibility, but it's also like hospitality. Do you like to take mm -hmm. care of people? Like, would you work in a hotel? Would you wait tables? Like, are you willing to put other people before you and take care of them? Because that's ultimately like what leading group trips is. Of course, like you need to be fun and there's all these other things and you need to be travel savvy, but ultimately it's taking care of people. Like you're making yeah. sure everybody is taken care of and they're okay. Um, and that was not the case in this trip. Not only were people just really poorly prepared, especially in a country where once you're there, you're there and there's not a whole lot you could do about it. But these, we just weren't taken care of. Um, it was all about um, this person being on vacation themselves versus mm. taking care of the people on their trip and making sure that they felt safe. And, you know, there's just so many, so many, so many issues. People not knowing where they were staying, um, having very limited phone service. And so not even being able to like Google things. Like it was just, it was just issue after issue after issue. Um, it was absolutely a nightmare trip. Um so many of us, I think, had PTSD. 
after that experience. It was bad. But you know, I always say like when I when I worked in leadership and when I used to teach, I always learned from the bad experiences just as much, if not more, than the good ones. Cause it yeah. was like the okay, like what not to do. Like this is never gonna happen on one of my trips. So it was also like as traumatizing as that experience was for a lot of us, it was also like a very eye-opening experience for me of like the responsibility that you have as a a group trip leader. Yeah. And I I think what's important here, I'm like I'm hearing two things. And it goes beyond just having this like, oh, well, there's an itinerary. And like it's very clear what we're doing because it's not just about what you're gonna do and when. It goes so much more beyond that. And the two things I think about, the first one is um, and I recommend this read for everybody. I really, really genuinely loved this book, not just because I love fine dining and dined at a lot of these restaurants, but a book called Unreasonable Hospitality. And it's the guy behind oh, many restaurants, but 11 Madison Park, somewhere that I loved to dine, and how he focused on not just the chef and the food aspect of things, but his job was around the hospitality of it all, and how he truly went above and beyond to create these amazing experiences for people. So Unreasonable Hospitality kind of talks about how he cared for the people and really helped them to have the experience that they were looking for. Um, and it's interesting because in this context, we're talking about dining, but especially in the fine dining space, this is a moment to share an experience with the person you're with or with the group you're with over a shared meal. Um, and they did a lot to create this amazing hospitable environment. And when I think about group trips, you know, it's like, you're not just out there, you know, somewhere in the world experiencing this thing. It's how can we, how might we help a group to have a freaking badass experience together, right? Because it's really about connecting with each other and connecting with the place in a way that feels good for everybody and meets you where you're at, at your comfort level with your needs. Because like, there have been group trips that I've gone on where it's just like, you are just felt, you feel like you are run over. Like, all right, everyone's doing this one thing, but it's like, oh my gosh, that's not for me. Or like, oh, I feel uncomfortable doing this or that. And it's like less about like, oh, you know, what kind of pain in the ass need do you have? But really it's about how can we have this great, amazing trip, but in, in this way that thinks about hospitality. Mm -hmm. And I'm also laughing because the second thing I think about is communication. And so I used to plan tons of epic group trips and also epic group parties uh, with all of my friends, especially, uh, I guess, both in San Francisco and New York City. And one of the things that was so important to me is the communication of like, what to expect? What are we doing next? And it's not just like we tell you once and you here, we'll refer to your printed itinerary. Yeah. You know, it's like, getting people excited also, like even just now, like I just got off Virgin Voyages with my mom and I'm like, mom, let's, you know, let's quickly review the next two hours. You know, like you have 10 minutes here to continue to get ready. If you need a little bit more time, no problem. But we have, what we have coming up is this. And then from that, we'll immediately go here and here. And so you might consider bringing, you know, a long sleeve because we'll be inside and your sunglasses because after that we're playing pickleball. And then after that, you know, make sure you bring that fun hat of yours so that we're, we're going to be taking a couple photos here later. And then after that, you'll have time to come back to the room in case you want to change again. And we'll talk about the later activities after that. You know, it's like that, like how long did that take? Right. But it mm -hmm. helped to like set her expectation. She knew exactly like what she needed to be doing and just felt both excited about what we had coming up as well as like in the know about like, okay, cool. Like I have all these items in my bag, like let's go adventure together. And then we would go do the things and then come back and keep resetting. But communication is so important. And like, I was hearing about some of the things that you do, like your group calls and your guides, et cetera. And so this is really important because if you're considering a group trip, these are things that are needed. So tell us a little bit about like the group calls and the guides and the things that you do. Yeah, I um, do. Obviously, I'm in communication with with people throughout. You know, there's this depending when you book a trip, it might be a year in advance. So, um, I've obviously available. But as the group as the trip becomes closer, I set up a WhatsApp chat, and that's so people can start to introduce themselves, see who they're traveling with. I'm sure there's always anxiety in a group of like, who am I going to be with? You know, it's yeah. like it's like you're going to 
it's the new school year and who's in my class. Um, so allowing people to just see who's in their group, start to connect on social media, ask questions. It's just an easy way to kind of get everybody together. But then about four to six weeks before my group trips, I do an orientation call over Zoom and I encourage everybody to attend it live so that, you know, you can see faces. I do introductions. People talk about what they're most excited about. It just personalizes like this trip that you're going to be on with strangers. Uh, but more importantly, I go through everything that I think you need to know for your trip. And I do it that far in advance so that you have time to shop. So you have time to get a travel credit card if you need one, set up a bank account, like whatever it is that you need. You're not scrambling last minute to like pull this all together. Um, but I mean, it's I, I give people like a 30 page guide. It's no joke. It takes me forever to put this together, especially the first time. I just did my Greece orientation like two nights ago and I spent days putting together my guide because it's what would I need to know if I was going to Greece for the mm. first time? And that's also why I always, I've never taken a group trip to a country I've never been to. Um, I'm only taking people to places that I have gone and vetted and experienced for myself. And that mm. is not only so that I can like say I've been there and get used to the culture, but also like it puts me in their shoes of like, this is what I wish I would have known. This is what I wish somebody yeah. would have told me. I wish I would have packed this. I'm taking notes every single day when I'm scouting of like, these are things people need to know. These are things people need to pack. This is something I need to make sure it's everybody not like is me making YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm I'm very, very organized. Um, and I almost like over inform people. Um, and then I record that call so that not only can you listen to it again, but if you miss it, then you get to listen to it. Um, and then there's a written guide that goes with it so that people can also like read at their leisure. I have it, I have it hyperlinked so you can click on things. I mean, I go down to like what to pack. Um day by day. I have a whole like shop front that, you know, if you oh, want to buy, because people always be like, where'd you buy that? Where'd you get that neck pillow? Mm -hmm. Where'd you get mm -hmm. this travel medicine kit? Whatever it is. I like your outfit. All of that stuff is linked for people so that they have outfit inspiration. They have all the things they could possibly need. I, I now focus on travel medicine. Um, mm. If you get sick, like let's hopefully avoid you getting sick by preparing in the first place by either mm. getting prescriptions from your doctor, having maybe like preventative antibiotics in case you do get sick in a foreign country, nausea, you know, car sickness, all the things that happen with people. Like I try to prepare them as much as possible for themselves, but then I also have all these things with me in case something goes wrong. Cause when you have 14 people, someone's going to get a stomach ache. Somebody's mm -hmm. probably going to get a cold. Like somebody's going to have a sore throat, like whatever it is, all those things pop up. People get allergies. I have like all that stuff with me. At people call me mom because I was going to say you're like the rescue, the rescue mom. But it, you know, so I'm listening to you and I'm like, holy smokes! Because when I create my YouTube videos, you know, I'm I'm trying to help people to like know what to expect so they can have the best time possible and prepare themselves. But for you, it takes it one step further because not only do you need them to be prepared. Because if they're not, you are the one that's going to have to like help them with it. It's interesting because yeah. like I'm just on the receiving end of comments on YouTube, but you are physically taking people through this experience. And so mm -hmm. you really want them to be prepared. I love that. I love yeah, that. It also just empowers people to be savvier travelers. Like yeah. I feel like if you travel with me one time, like even if you've never like had a big, long international trip, like I guarantee you, you're going to be so much more empowered the next time you try to do it yourself or with your friends. Like I just had people last night, I was having wine with them and they're like, we're going to Europe for the first time. Give us like one tip. Like, what do we need to know? And I was like, one, I can't give you one, but you know, it's, it's those, it's those little things. Like, do I take money out from my bank before I go? Mm -hmm. Or do I get money at an ATM. There's yeah. just so many little things like that. And I break that all down. Like here's and that the kind answers of cards I recommend. different than which, which country you're going to. Absolutely. So my, different. Yeah. my guide is different for every country. There's concerns in Cuba that don't exist in Morocco and vice versa. Like everything is tailored to that trip down to safety, currency, what to pack, what not to pack. You know, you can't bring a drone in Morocco. Like there's all these, <laughs> there's all these things that you need to know that would take you a lot of time to figure out. And sometimes it's just like, you don't even know the 
you have the questions until somebody tells you. And then you're like, oh yeah, that's good information to know. Like I would probably would have figured that out when I got there, but the goal is to make sure you have all the information. I had a woman that she just went to Morocco with me. She said she listened to my orientation call four times. And I was like, <laughs> well, hold on. So spoiler alert, there's a reason why I'm choosing Laura for the group trips. Like I'm listening to your story right now. I'm like, that is so badass that you go to this extent. But I mean, at the same time, like this is why people go and choose you for group trips. You're preparing them and then you're going to take them through this adventure. So have a badass adventure with us. But there's one more thing that you said in there that I thought was really important. And I'm going to give you an example of my own unreasonable hospitality, which will also lead to our future episode about us both being divorced. You're probably like, Ooh, where is this going? So WhatsApp group, right? So it's like, who's on the trip? Like, oh my gosh, like you can, you can have. I have anxiety when I go on group trips, when I don't know who's going to be there. And it's mm -hmm. like, Ew, like, I don't know what to expect. Like, am I going to get along with everyone? Am I going to be on a group trip where it's like everyone else already knows each other and I'm just the odd one out? Like, these mm -hmm. are valid feelings. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people felt that way when they came to the sickest party that I've ever thrown, which is my wedding. So I'm now divorced. I had an epic wedding. And one of the things that I did in terms of unreasonable hospitality is before the actual wedding day, I brought everyone to wine country. At this time, I was living in San Francisco, had my big wedding um, in, in the city, but brought everyone to Sonoma beforehand to have this epic day together. And I knew it was going to be a great time, but there was probably around 20 people who were like friends from different groups, you know what I mean? Like different circles that have never seen each other, never interacted each with each other and likely like, like would have nothing in common. You know what I mean? Like you would look at mm -hmm. each other and be like, oh, like one of my closest friends, Deb, like she old AF, like Deb's probably like 70. She acts like she's 21. She can drink me under the table. Like she's a she's total hippie. Lives in, my vibe. lives in Berkeley. Like I love this woman. She doesn't look like or have anything in common with my, uh, one of the executives at a very large bank went to UC Berkeley with me, like very well to do owns many multi-million dollar condos and houses around San Francisco Two totally different people. Right. And so what I did was I, I, this is when I used to work in the corporate world. I created a PowerPoint deck. And in the PowerPoint deck, like imagine this, your photo, Laura Erickson, and then it'd be like my nickname for you, right? So I'd probably be like at Lola Whiskey. Um, and then like three fun facts about you. Like she does group trips. She like fill in the blank, fill in the blank. And then like two people you should meet and why. Laura should connect with Deb because they would totally vibe about blah, blah, blah. And you should connect with fill in the blank. And it was your job to have these papers and you have the whole deck uh, on your phone so you can look at your phone. And so during this wine country day, everyone had a job to go meet those two people. And it forced everyone to like be able to see in advance who's there with the mm -hmm. photo. What, like, And it, it also had like the one thing I really love about you. I love that she's a badass group trip organizer. Like this is why we're doing the group trips together. And so it what gave people talking points and what happened because my intention that day was to have a day in which all the people I love the most could connect and have this phenomenal time so that when we got to the actual party, which was the wedding the next day, right. it would be insane. And right. it was, <laughs> like, it was insane. And so many people came up to me and they're like, you could have had what most people have, which is a wedding that celebrates you. But instead, what you had was a well, a wedding that celebrated the love you have in your life and brought together all the people you love the most. That is a different kind of intention and a different mm -hmm. level of hospitality that can bring people together to literally have the most badass time like at a wedding. When people tell me like, oh, your wedding was the best I've ever, I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, spoiler alert. Spoilers. If you are on a group trip with us, you will be receiving. It will not be in Microsoft PowerPoint. It will be in a Google Drive. 
available via your phone, but that is something that you can expect. All right. Okay. That's positive stuff. Let's get back to negative stuff. Are you ready? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So we talked about what to expect, um, which kind of leads to like the intentions of a trip and being able to make like really good connections. Because I, I guess this is kind of tied to like groups that are too big where it's hard to like truly connect with people, especially if you're like, oh man, like that click was totally formed and I have no one to hang out with. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen that on group trips that I've been on where it's like, oh wow, like even on creator trips where it's like, oh wow, these creators Mm. know each other and they're all hanging out. And now, you know, and all these, who wants to take a selfie with me? Oh, just me? Okay, I'll just take another selfie by myself. Like, and it doesn't feel great. And so- When it comes to like intention and connecting with people, I guess you can choose whether you have a positive story or a negative story. Share with me something. Oh, wait, you know, people who've gotten married after your group trips. Maybe that's a good place to start. Share. Yeah, I have seen. I mean, I don't think most people walk away from one of my group trips without making at least one friend. And usually it's multiple. And I've seen people travel together after my trips, like on their own. I had um, three girls that went to Canada with me last summer, two summers ago. Um, They did like their own trip last summer together with their kids. So so cool to see. Um, All three of those girls came on a trip to Cuba with me this year, like together. Um, I had people meet on my Mexico City trip that I knew separately that started dating on the trip and left together and literally got married. Um, <laughs> so cool. Like I, I very rarely see somebody not making a friend. And my goal is that worst case scenario, hopefully you at least have a friend in me. Um, Cause I'm not just there. Like I don't do this just to like make money. Like I want to genuinely get to know everybody on my trips and hopefully be friends with them. And of course, like you're never guaranteed to, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Maybe you won't like me, but (laughs) I'm sincerely friends with so many people that are on my group trips and that's why they continue to come back. It's not just because I'm sure it's not just because they trust me and they know I'm going to give them a kick-ass trip. It's also because they genuinely like me and we're actual friends. Yeah. Um, And you can't do that when you have 50 people. I can't give 50 people my, my time and energy when there's just too many of them. So group trips are obviously for the people on them, but they're also like for me to connect with people and form actual friendships and relationships and bonds. And I, I keep in touch with so, so many. I have, I have WhatsApp, like I said, I have WhatsApp chats for all my groups. I never delete them. So they, they exist in, they exist forever unless WhatsApp goes away. And like all of a sudden, like a group chat will like come back from the dead from two years ago and somebody will post something in it. I have some that like, my my groups from January, like they still message, I'd say several times a week. They, we have a, I bought everybody or I made Cuban cowboy calendars for my Cuba group <laughs> of all the cowboys. And one of, one of the girls, every first of the month, she's like, guess what day it is. Time to flip your calendars, ladies. And then like, we're like, look at Mr. May. Um, it's just it's awesome. So like I have my Mexico city group from last year. Like one of them is in Oaxaca right now and she's sharing her trip with everybody. Like my, my Cuba trip, my Cuba group does meet up still. That's so I mean so like cool. the, the goal is not that you just go on this trip and you have a great time and then you never see these people again. The goal is that you leave with actual friends that you're going to hopefully like see again. And at a minimum, just keep in touch with it's not. And of course, like I said, at a minimum, hopefully you keep in touch with me, but I see people constantly planning stuff together or there I see them meeting up in another city and posting pictures like that stuff like makes me feel like I did my job because the goal is for everybody to walk you might come alone but the goal is for you to not walk away feeling alone and I also find that like yeah you have your friends at home and that's great but sometimes like there's something about meeting people traveling and having like this shared experience together in a very condensed period of time where I feel like people really like form intense bonds because they've shared all of these different cool experiences together, whether that's um, getting blessed by a shaman in Mexico city and we're all crying our freaking eyes out <laughs> when snotty babies, um, maybe everybody uh, shitting their pants in Morocco. 
true story. Um, or going through an earthquake together, a natural disaster together. Like if you want to bond some people real quick, go through something really serious and scary together. Cause true. that group, that group is bonded forever because of that experience that we had, like right before we even met, like people were bonded because of what happened when we were in Morocco last year. So it's just not, you just don't get those types of experiences when you do it alone. Like, yeah, you might meet some people, hopefully you do, but I just feel like it's setting you up for success to make friends that you'll have forever. This is the power of travel, right? Like not even just traveling alone, but even if you were to meet up with your closest friend for brunch every single Sunday, then that means in a 30 day period of time, maybe you'll have spent like eight hours together. But when you go on a trip to Mexico City together for a week, how many hours is that, right? There's 24 hours in the day and you're together all those times adventuring, except for, you know, those moments where there's a break in the schedule and you can go have your own adventure. But you're going through these shared experiences that tie you together. Can I tell you a secret? Yeah. So one of the one of the reasons why, like, I am just so excited. For so I've never been to Mexico City. This is where our first destination is going to be. Not only am I excited to just explore adventure and have a badass time in Mexico City, I am personally so excited to just hang out with you and like Same. really get to know you because we traveled together for a tiny second. I met a uh, background story. I met Laura at a travel conference at TBEX, the Travel Bloggers Exchange. It was held in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Actually, I was speaking on drones at that yep. conference. You were there and we we met in the hallways and like... I don't know. I'm just like, this is a badass chick. Like, I want to get to know her. And I think, I think after that, I was just like, I really want to uncover your story about like starting these group trips, which is a podcast episode. You can check that out in the show notes below. And like fast forward, you know, that was a year ago. And I approached you and was like, we got to do this. Like we got to do these group trips. And it comes back to like, we're talking about these amazing connections but it also comes from what's the intentionality behind these trips? Because every time I travel, I ask myself this question. I ask, like, who do I want to be on this trip? And what kind of an adventure and what kind of a memory do I want to create from doing this? And when I think about these group trips, it's, you know, if you're listening to this podcast episode, there's something more you want out of life. You know, you want to be that 1% more badass and let's go do that together on these group trips and connect. And like, let's get the, let's get the right people on the trip with the right number of people with the right mindset and the right intention to like, Hey, some of the things we might do, like getting snotty and crying with a shaman, doing something really freaking cool in a different cultural experience that's very normal for them. I tried this when I was in Taposland. I cried my eyes out. I was also really sweaty and disgusting. It was amazing. And when I went on this separate group trip to Taposland, this was a wellness retreat where we were doing breath work. There's a whole podcast series about this on this, uh, in, a, in a series on this podcast as well. I was bonded to those people because we had this shared experience that was so different and so individually moving for us but we were all together going through this together. And now we have our WhatsApp group that I can't keep up with. They blow it up yeah. all the time. I'm just like, oh my God, let me read through 300 messages. Hi guys, love you. <laughs> yeah. But when, all, when I also say, hi guys, love you, I'm like, no, really, like, love you guys. Like we went through this shared experience for a week and I feel forever bonded with these people. Um, and I can't wait to experience that with you. Which, speaking of which, how do people find you? Tell us. Um, you can find me. I mean, if you just Google my name, you'll find me. Um, Laura Erickson. I'm lucky that there aren't that many on the interwebs. So, like, when you Google me, I'm the top result. Like, don't even yes. have to pay for it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but my last name is E-R-I-C-S-O-N. That's the only thing you have to watch out for. Otherwise, you get an Audubon bird photographer <laughs> named Laura Erickson. Um <laughs> But yeah, my website's lauraerickson.com, Instagram, Lola Whiskey. You can find me on Facebook. I should pop up as your top result. Hell if internet, yeah. If the internet gods are working in my favor. Or you can just click on all of the links in the show notes below. And 
take a badass trip with us. More info than that in the description. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. I'm so excited for these group trips with Laura Erickson at Lola Whiskey. Make sure you connect with her and find more info in the show notes below. Connect with me. I'm at Christine Lozada everywhere. Share this with someone who might find value in it. And <laughs> please leave a review. It really does help us and join us. We have an entire series. This is just one of several episodes. All of that is in the show notes below, as well as info about our group trips. And in the meantime, Go forth, be badass, and we'll see you in the next adventure. Ciao.